Hi, everybody. Um, this is our first mom and the monastery, um, where Jill Harbach and I are sharing a little bit more about mom, um, a little bit more, a lot more actually about the monastery and, and its um, secrets. Um, the labyrinth comes out each time we're at the monastery on uh, for the mom and on other occasions as well. And it's a, it's a copy of the uh, labyrinth at Chartres Cathedral in France. And the monastery is actually linked on the same ley line as the, um, as the monastery in Manchester. But uh, I don't want to steal Jill's thunder. Um, so how, how we're going to start here is I'm going to start you in um, just a very short presencing meditation so that we're, we're here. I'm then going to read you the words of um, Mary Magdalena, written or channeled through Alison Knox that we read on the day, representing the Divine Feminine. I'm then going to hand uh, over to Jill, who's going to talk about the labyrinth and whatever else Jill wants to talk about. And then we'll have a, another short meditation and then we'll move into conversation. So that's the plan. So let's find some comfort and really welcome. I'm so thrilled that, uh, that we're all together for, for this. It's very short notice. So uh, I appreciate you being able to be so flexible of just jumping on. So let's find comfort. Let's find our feet on the floor or however, however you are and find a position that's comfortable just for a couple of minutes. And I invite you to close your eyes or softly lower your gaze. And in this space of comfort and maybe soft focus, connect with the breath, connect with the natural breath. Notice where you're breathing from. Are you breathing through the nose or the mouth? Doesn't matter. Notice what's feeling comfortable for you today. And if you're breathing through the nose, notice if one nostril is more dominant than the other as the breath enters and leaves. Okay, this is just gentle inquiry. And then move your attention down so that the chin is in alignment and you feel a gentle stretch at the back of the neck. And your shoulders are slightly back so that you can take a, a longer breath into the heart space. So be with this breath in the heart space for a moment or two. And maybe notice if the breath is regular, if it's deep or shallow. And with this inquiry, we're just simply observing the breath. And then relaxing the belly above and below the navel. And then having a longer, slower or longer, deeper breath in and feel the belly rise. and a slow, long breath out. Do a couple of rounds of those in your own time. Finding your own level of comfort with the deeper breath. And then simply revert to a natural breath, 
And notice if there's anywhere in the body that's wanting a little more attention, maybe somewhere that's a bit tight, a bit, a bit of tension. And take your kind, gentle awareness to that place and then breathe into it and relax on the out breath. And if there's nowhere that's calling for attention, simply be in the heart space with a natural rhythmic breath. As we settle into comfort in the body, the mind naturally starts to move into a place of calm. Let's enjoy a minute's silence. Stay with the breath and watch the time. So stay with your eyes closed as I read the words of Mary Magdalena, channeled by Alison Knox of Everyday Angels. I have come to walk you home. As the beloved stranger, I stand before you clothed in naked openness, with a heart that has stood sentient to the mystery of creation and the first mewling cry of humanity's severance from source. As each of you steps forward, seeking remembrance of your truth, grasping at slippery silvered threads of consciousness that snarl you up in their deceptive illusion, I beg you to let go. The letting go is painful. I understand your reluctance, but the holding on is excruciating. Do not fight it. Those threads will tighten and render your soul paralyzed and despairing. Let go to remember who you were before the world told you who you should be. Love is a brave truth that feels nothing. When love calls, become the witness and be yourself. Love requires truth. Truth lives within self. Let go, unlearn. Return to the cradle of zero, that infinite microcosm, the default setting of life itself, the sacred vessel of creation carried within my womb. I arise as the forgotten one, the banished truth, the derided whore, and the selfless healer and the best beloved. Those who know me need not permission of man, but of their own hearts to speak my name. Mary, O oh Mary, Mary Magdalena. I bestow some sacred kiss born within my heart and delivered as a blessing upon these lips where salted tears have fallen in the name of love. Return the blessing. Feel nothing as I pass that kiss into your heart. Nothing. Step closer, beloved, and embrace this familiar stranger. I have come to walk you home. So take a moment. I have come to walk you home.
I invite you now to gently in your own time open your eyes and maybe have a little stretch have a little stretch stretch out in the space around you or in front of you or below you wherever you feel you would just want to go but wiggle those fingers and toes but stay within this beautiful space of calm and I'm going to introduce my fabulous friend Jill Jill Harbatch Jill could you mute yourself Hang on, you're still muted. Jill, you're still muted. Okay, now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so over to you, my dear, and um, you have as long as you want. Thank you. Me and technology, honestly. It's <laughs> amazing that we've got this far today. <laughs> Sue usually does all the tech and dear Susie. So I, this is new for me. So hello everyone. Some faces I recognize. Hi Sue, is that Joan over there? Um, I think, and uh, it is. <laughs> and some other faces I recognize from the, uh, from the mom. So I'm Jill Harbatch. Um, I am part of the, mon the monastery team and have been for about 18 years. Um, I've had various different guises over the years, but my latest guise <laughs> is a um, meditation teacher there and also um, researcher. So I research into all sorts of different things. Obviously it was a Franciscan friary originally, the monastery. Um, so I like to research on the Franciscan side of things, but that leads me down all sorts of other different rabbit holes. Um, um, which takes me into ancient wisdoms, esoteric wisdom, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and included in that is the labyrinth. Um, so on the mom Sundays, we always have the labyrinth out in the centre of the monastery. Well, I'll just say as well, today I'm not at the monastery, I'm at home. So I apologise for any dogs barking, any cuckoo clocks going, <laughs> <laughs> and anything else that happens to happen because I live in a house which is right on a high street um, the windows you can see there in the background are onto the high street so um, we never quite know what's going to happen here um, so um, it's an it's an ideal place to really actually find the still part of you actually because for all that's going on and you can still find the still part of you that's that's good um, so at the monastery on uh, Mom Sundays, we always have the labyrinth out in the centre of the monastery and we have it out in the in the great nave. Um, and in this, uh, the monastery great nave, for those who haven't seen it, is enormous. It, it's, it's a huge space with columns down either side. And then that leads up to the chancel and beyond that is the altar as well. So in the main nave part before the altar area, in the centre, we have the labyrinth. And the labyrinth is based on the labyrinth, which is in Chartres Cathedral in France. So that's basically what it looks like. Some of you have seen that on the, I'm gonna turn it around so we've got the entrance at, the, at where we usually go in. So you've got that on your invitation today anyway as well. Um, the one in Chartres Cathedral in France, it's in northern France, just above uh, Paris, trying to locate where it is. It's a Gothic cathedral and it's been through lots of different guises um, over the years because it's burnt down, got rebuilt. But the um, labyrinth, they think, is from the earliest period. So it's from the 11, 1200s. Um, and it's set in the ground in the floor of the of the great nave so how we do it at the monastery as well um, and it's made of tiles and usually it's covered in chairs but on a friday they take the chairs away and people can walk this labyrinth now in shark cathedral um, as i said it was medieval there was a whole series of cathedrals built around the same time all across France, northern France, and they all had labyrinths put into the floor of them as well. 
Unfortunately, I think there's only two left now, Chartres, and then there's one other as well in Northern France. So Chartres is really the one that everyone will goes to if they want to, to walk a labyrinth. But that's what you call the Christian labyrinth. There are labyrinths which predate that as well, which you can find um, in Northern Europe. There's ones made out of stones. There's ones made out of turf, which are actually in Britain and in Scotland as well, there's some as well. Um, and there are some in Europe as well. So people have used the symbol of the labyrinth for many hundreds of years um, and have made them out of whatever they had at the time, basically. In the Christian medieval cathedrals, they did it out of clay, which was made into, um, into the tiles, into the brick, which was the tiles. So what is a labyrinth? Why? What's the symbol mean? Well, it's a bit of a guesswork, really. And there's plenty of books written on it. Uh, there's books written by archaeologists. There's books written by spiritual people. So there's a whole gamut of, of information about labyrinths. But one of the things that I find about it is, is it's entirely experiential. So until you walk a labyrinth, you don't really understand them. <laughs> now, um, the one we have at the labyrinth that is canvas, and as I said, based on the one at Shark Cathedral, at Shark Cathedral but it actually is, you can in the US walk one, exactly the same, the canvas one, the same as us, um, at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. And the lady that um, really started all that movement on, on a sacred, what she called the sacred path, this is her book, uh, Walking a Sacred Path, and it's uh, Dr. Lauren Artress. And that's a really good book that covers a bit of the archaeological stuff, but it also covers the spiritual as well. And uh, she's one of the spiritual advisors. I don't know what she's doing now. I'm assuming she's still at Grace Cathedral. Um, and if you want to, there's something called Veriditas that she runs as well online that you can go and have a look at. So there's lots of information on there about, about labyrinths as well. But basically, it's a sacred symbol. And as in the beautiful words of Alison, um, which were, I have come to walk you home. That's what was in Mary Magdalene's words. That's basically what it's about. So it's about the feminine and it's about walking the feminine and walking you home. So the circle is a feminine symbol. And the labyrinth that we walk, the sharp one, when you come in, it's what they call unicursal a labyrinth because it's only one way. There's only one way to reach the center. A maze is what they call multicursal. So a maze basically is lots of places to get lost. But a labyrinth is just one way. But at the same time as when you walk in, you don't know where you're going. So um, even if you're doing this with your finger, and by the way, there are finger labyrinths around the world as well. They found those on stone uh, caves. Um, and also there's one at Luca Cathedral in Italy on the wall as well. But when you walk in, you, you don't know how you're going to get to the centre. You know you're going to get there because you're told that you're going to get there, but you don't know how you're going to get there. So you keep walking. And as you can see, this is, this is separated into four quarters. So you have to walk a quarter and then moving through, moving through, moving through, and eventually you'll reach the middle. And I say it's feminine because it's the centre. It's, it's a circle, which the circle in Christianity is the symbol for, that's my cuckoo clock, the symbol for the feminine. And the other thing is when you're walking the labyrinth, you're engaging the right hind side of your brain. And the right hand side of the brain is the feminine side of the brain, which is the creative, which is the intuitive. So that's the intuition about trying to work, working out where am I going next? You're not doing it logically. You can't do it logically because there's no way that you can walk that path logically. You can't see where the path's going to lead you. So you have to do it creatively. So when you start to walk that path, you have to switch into that right hand side of the brain. 
So it's great for any of us who are out of balance. And it's also great if, you're, if you've got a question or um, a problem in life that you don't know how to solve and that you need some sort of creative way that you can come up with a solution. So I'm talking about walking it, but if you print one of these off, you can actually do this yourself with your finger and think about a problem and start walking the labyrinth with your finger. Um, thanks, Sue, for everything you're putting out there. <laughs> um, so this is set into four quarters, the, the sharp labyrinth, and that those four quarters represent the four quarters of the year. And then around the outside, you've got what they call lunations, which are, they look like cogs actually, but they're like half of a lunar, they're half of the moon. And those are really important because in that quarter, in those quarters, it also shows you the 28 days of the moon as well. So it, it, it's a bit of a calendar at the same time as this amazing uh, instrument of knowing, learning, but learning from the, from, from the intuitive, creative side of you. So a lot of people, as I said, ask a problem, ask, um, well, you know, what's the solution to such and such? So, so they'll walk it and walk it and walk it. And a lot of historians talk about that when you get to the center, you find yourself. So in other words, when you're walking that and say, if you have got a problem or a prayer that you're doing or whatever, you're, you're getting to the center of yourself by the time you've walked there. And it can take a while because it depends on whether you're walking slowly, skipping, some people dance it. It's pretty amazing to watch when people are dancing it as well. I've actually seen a couple get married on it. They did the journey together, weaving their way to the center, which was absolutely stunning. It was a really amazing wedding. Um, so they, it felt like they really joined their centers, their hearts in the center. It, it was very moving. And they did that at the monastery as well. Um, we're lucky at the monastery that it's very few people walking around. And when they're walking it, they're walking it, they're dedicating themselves when they walk it. If you go to Sharp Cathedral, it's a living cathedral. It's a tourist site. So people are coming and going all the time and they're walking across the labyrinth. <laughs> You're, and you're walking this labyrinth, doing this, trying to concentrate, and there's people walking across in front of you. And it's a real test of the, of the self, to be honest, as well, to how am I going to deal with these people interfering in my life? Because that's what it feels like. I've got a problem and I need to sort this out, or I'm wanting to get into serenity. And these people keep walking across and things. And I did it once three times in one day. And in that day, I went in at half eight in the morning when they just cleared the chairs off and it was serene in there. And the, the light was coming through from the beautiful medieval glass windows and I was walking it. And then I went in at lunchtime and, and then now they'd got all the tours going. So all the people are walking across and the tour guides take people straight across the labyrinth and the people are just following the tour guide. They're not even interested that, you know, that you're walking this labyrinth in front of them. Uh, and, and the whole idea as well is to do it with bare feet. So you've got people walking across who are stepping on your foot and all sorts of things. So by that stage, when I came off, I was so angry. <laughs> it was just like so irate. It wasn't a sublime experience at all. And that then at the end of the day, I did it again. It was quiet. It was the end of the day in the, in, in the cathedral. And it was a different experience from the morning, the afternoon and the evening. So it, it reveals you as you're walking. It's revealing you all the time and what you need to work on. I find it an absolutely fascinating instrument. But I'm talking about walking it. It's equally amazing just using your finger as well. Um, and um, over the years, uh, let's just check on the time. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually built a turf one at one point. I built one at my house. Um, and the earliest forms of labyrinths are called um, the classical, which is seven circles. And the, the, one, the one that we're, uh, you're going to be walking with your finger is an 11 circuit. Let's find a classical one for you, picture. 
Um, a lot of people know the, the word labyrinth from um, the Minotaur, the story of the Minotaur, Ariadne and the Minotaur, and the, and, and the, the Minotaur, they built the labyrinth to stop the Minotaur getting out. And that's in Crete, in Knossos, in the Temple of Knossos. And they really believe that the, un the underground, there were these tunnels. Sorry, I'm not looking at you. I'm just trying to find a picture of the classical one, but I can't at the moment. Um, the, the underground, they built these tunnels um, in the shape of the classical one. As I say, it's seven circles. I'll see if I can find it, but I can't at the moment. No, sorry. But look it up, you'll find it on Veritas. Um, so I, th that's a much simpler version. And I built one of those because to try and build that, <laughs> that Chartres one would have been impossible um, because I was unwell at the time. And I thought, um, if I build this, I can walk this every day and this will be my prayer for getting well. That's it. Thank you, Sue. Sue's holding up the classic one. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, um, and that's what I walked every day for a year. And I had a serious illness. Um, but if I couldn't walk it, what I did was I walked it with my finger. So I walked my paper one with the intent of I was going to get well. Uh, and here I am today. I'm well. Um, and as I told the people on Sunday at the monastery, uh, at the end of the year, there was an apple tree when I built the labyrinth. Um, there was an apple tree by the labyrinth at the end of the year when I was well. The, la the apple tree had actually died. So it's almost like the labyrinth takes off of you what you're offering to it as well. Um, so if you're offering yourself, which is what it's all meant to be about, um, it's the journey of the self, then, then it actually is taking that for you as well. So um, it's really important that these, these labyrinths, when they're built, that they're put on, on ancient lines as well, energy lines. Um, or ley lines as people call them and, and our canvas one is at the monastery as well it's placed on ley lines at the monastery and the reason I say that is because what it does is it it creates a connection with the earth as well where the labyrinth is it becomes what they call a node point and the node point then actually takes the energy so there's an exchange of energy goes between you and the land as well at that point as well so it works on many many different levels um, and I think I'll leave it there, but I'm really open to, to questions and anything else anyone wants to have a chat about with that. Anything, Sue, that you wanted to add to that? Thank you, Jill. I mean, that was, um, just let me, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, that's, it's so fascinating. Uh, I find it really fascinating, which I hadn't realized that it was about, um, it was more the the feminine mm -hmm. um you know moving into your right brain because you're not quite sure where you're going so you have to use your creative uh, intuition um so yeah the the whole i, I am suddenly immersed <laughs> in labyrinths in such a big way now i too have bought the chart labyrinth um and found it a very moving experience mm -hmm. um not knowing that it was um really what it was except I'd heard about it so you know the gift that the monastery gives mom every month by unfurling the labyrinth for us to to enjoy and really taking advantage of it this time has been has been phenomenal um, you, you, you learn so much as when you're walking it as well because someone said to me on Sunday what happens if I meet someone coming the other way and I said well think about it in life what happens if you meet somebody coming towards you in life what do you do do you step aside <laughs> or do you say hi and, and acknowledge each other? What do you do? I said, it's exactly the same on the labyrinth. Yes. Um, it, it's absolutely fascinating. But this time you can't get away from it because that person's right in front of you. They're, they're barring your path. Yes. Yes. And I wonder if I could show everybody um, this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I could just explain how this came into my life and I, I think Joan actually on the call is it Mary that has one as well who bought it bought it with her on Sunday so um after the uh after the event we were so taken by the the labyrinth that um uh, I think it was Mary bought with her which was a, one that we could hold 
Um, Alison Knox, who I've just read the words from, decided that she was going to see if she could find somebody who did it, because apparently you used to sell them in the monastery shop, didn't you, um, quite a long time ago. So she, um, she went on the internet and found this gentleman by the name of David Habel, who makes these by hand. And this particular one, uh, so I ordered it yesterday on Etsy, and it arrived today. It was £35, and it's, it's as big as my head, well, a bit smaller than my head. Um, it's just abs it's an absolute beautiful work of art. Um, what I'll do is I'll put his details because he sent a handwritten letter with it as well. Let me so, can you hold it up here so I can see it. Oh, oops, here we go. Okay, just one, two, three, four. Yeah, I was just, it looks more simple than, than the, yeah, that's fine. I was just counting the number of circuits. Yeah, it's there, isn't it? Yeah, it's there. So, it's done beautifully. He put this handwritten note in. Dear Sue, thank you so much for choosing this Chartres Labyrinth. I appreciate it more than you can imagine. Now you have it in your hands. I hope everything is as you expected and it brings you peace and calmness of mind. Mm -hmm. um, love from David. So I'll, um, I'll put his details in here if anybody is interested. And um, it was 35 pounds and it's made of oak. So, uh, so what was the thing we'll do now, Jill? If uh, I, I feel just maybe a little bit of a meditation for five minutes, and then I'll um, I'll stop the recording, and then we'll move into conversation. Okay, yeah. I'm going to um, mute myself just in case Mr. Pippin decides to do something. <laughs> okay. So let's. Um, you've shared such a lot of amazing. Uh, in information and inspiration as well for us to take ourselves on our own journeys to find out more about the labyrinths but I think this is just the beginning of many conversations because what's being shown to me is that um, because it's uh, representative of the divine feminine it would be absolutely fantastic if we could each find a labyrinth near where we live that we could maybe um, enjoy walking uh, and I've been thinking about this all day. And there's one at the university, at Nottingham University, which is very close to us, which I'm going to on Wednesday. So I'm going to seek it out and take a photograph. So my ask or my desire is if anybody feels inspired to go and find if there's a labyrinth close to where you live in your community or a, a little further afield, somewhere you can reach and actually physically go take a photograph of it and and um, post it to us and see, let, let's maybe create a, a, a network of, of labyrinths and see how we, uh, we can move forward. Anyway, that's just an idea. So shall we enjoy a five minute meditation? And then we'll move into conversation. So back to our, our position that we had earlier, if that feels comfortable. And I particularly ask that you, you sit not on your, the bottom of your spine, but sit forward a little so that your coccyx is released, allowing the free flow of energy up and down the spine and that the chin is down just a little so that you've got that stretch at the, the back of the neck uh, where the head meets the spine. And we close our eyes or we lower our gaze. We take a breath. And we center ourselves in the heart space. Breathing in and out through the heart. Make the breath the same on the in-breath as the out-breath. What we call the coherent breath. You maybe want to make a count of five in and five out. Or whatever the count is, make it the same and make it comfortable. Make it a gentle flow breath with your attention on your heart space. So 
So feeling centered, let the count drop. Just breathe in and out. So the breath flows in a regular fashion. And then in the center of the heart, bring to mind somebody or something who really loves you. Somebody, maybe here or gone, um, or a pet. But start to generate in the center of your heart the feeling of love. See that image in your mind's eye and feel the feeling of appreciation and affection that this person or pet is giving to you and expand. And then let that go and bring to mind a place that you love, a place that you love to be, anywhere in the world. See if you can find that destination that brings you great peace. It may be nearby, it may be further away. Picture it in your mind's eye, make it brighter. And feel the feeling of peacefulness. Let that go. And in this place of expansion, let me offer some words. First to place into our hearts. And say them silently to yourself. I am forgiving. I am patient. I am harmony. I am compassionate. I am respectful. I am enthusiastic. I am love. I am love. I am love. Feel the feeling. Feel the sensations of love within. And as we've generated it within ourselves, let's cascade to each other in this space. And those watching the recording, Cascade love out and then breathe it back into yourself. Breathe out to each other and into yourself. Expand a bit further out into the place that you reside. Sending love through the out breath and receiving it back on the in breath. And then even further out into the world. Breathe out love out into the world and breathe 
it back into you. Let's slowly bring ourselves back now from the world back into our home, to our community, back into this circle, back into our own hearts with one more affirmation of I am love. Let it all go with all fingers and toes. Let's energize. Let's come back into the here and now and have a stretch. So I thank everybody for being here. Thank you for watching this, if you're watching the recording. And we'll see you very soon. Mom at the Monastery, the next one is on the 5th of June. Sunday the 5th of June. In person, 11 till 4 or on Zoom at 3 p.m. London time, BST. Thank you.